So I'm going to go through a quick tutorial on uh, Kibana just to give a general sense of it. To begin this whole process, we have to make sure Elasticsearch and Kibana are running. So I'm really quickly going to go to the directory where I download unzip both of those software systems. And they make it really simple to get everything up and running. So for Elasticsearch, we just go to the binary directory and we just click the Elasticsearch bat file. And we end up with a node called skin, and that's based on a Marvel character. Now that will go keep uh, that will start running, and we go to Kibana, which is the client software. And in the binary uh, folder, just like Elasticsearch, there's Kibana.bat. So we double click that. So now we have both systems running. And now these are hosted locally, and they're web based which are also kind of nice, nice aspects of the system. So Kibana's default is that it runs on local host on the port 5601. And when you end up, uh, when you first begin it, it will ask you to, for an index pattern. And the index pattern is just what index are you actually looking at? And obviously Kibana doesn't have an initial index. So I created one called Yelp, which is Yelp Business Profiles based on an academic set found online. So I press create. And when I press create, it actually looks up the index and then it looks what values are, are present in those JSON documents. Um, just a real quick look, you can see that there's names associated with those attributes, a type, an analyzed field, which means when you're searching it, does it actually tokenize it and create root form words or are, are those not searchable terms? And then index just means, can you search it at all? So like I mentioned in the previous lecture, there are three major components to it, the discover, visualize, and dashboard components. So we'll begin with discover. Now, if you look at discover, you'll notice that the centerpiece has the actual result sets. The left part has all the attributes associated with those documents, and there's a search bar. So for the actual result sets, what's neat is you can open up individual result sets and look at them. This is the actual JSON return that you know that I mentioned. So it returns it in JSON format, but this table is a little more convenient. And you can see here there is the va the actual key, so the attribute that we were looking at and its value. And if you wanted to find similar documents to it, you could actually filter right here. So if I was looking for a docs. Uh, restaurants with free Wi-Fi, I could include it here, or I could say don't include all free Wi-Fi cases by pressing this button. So the hourglass with the minus versus the plus sign symbol. I'm going to include it real quickly. So now it's filtered and all of these documents here have free Wi-Fi. That's great. So let's look at this bar a little bit and let's start asking some questions exploring our data. So what about the attire case? The attire case is when we click it, it gives us a summary of 500 documents. So 321 of our documents have values. 96% um, of them are, say that the value is casual, the others are dressy. Um, some 100 plus don't have that attribute at all. Let's say we're not interested in casual, so we use the negative hourglass to exclude it. Now everything is dressy. So let's say that we wanted to get a little deeper and we wanted to search all of the fields for a specific word. Let's call it bars. We would use the search query up here. What's nice about the search feature is it highlights where it matches. What's interesting about this is it will highlight even if there's an, another word in front of it. So sports bars has bars in it and bars is what we're searching. So it ended up being one of the result sets. Now let's say we take these bars that are not casual and have free Wi-Fi and we wanted to explore more the aggregate nature of it. The first thing we'd do is we'd save the query, let's call it bars, and then we can press this visualize component. Now visualize is nice in that it has a lot of different options. Um, I'm going to do a area chart. When I press the area chart, you can open a query or produce a new one. I'm going to open the bars query that we mentioned. And we end up with this panel. The left panel here is what allows us to build our chart. 
is composed of three different layers. One is metrics, it determines what uh, aggregation methodology we use to produce this chart. The buckets tells us how we're gonna group them. So how is the X axis gonna be formed? If we're building a histogram, what are we using to bucket it? The views is just additional information additional options that you can use. The one that I typically have is show tool tips, which is just when you hover over the visualization, it provides extra information about it. So let's press the Y axis. We're gonna aggregate based on counts first. Let's add an extra aggregate so we can layer this on the Y axis. And we're gonna do the average stars of a restaurant or let's do a few counts. So what we'll end up having is a area chart, which the first at first uh, height will be determined by the count of the restaurant, and the second one will, will the second uh, area section will be the average of the review counts. Now let's go to the actual buckets, and there's several different uh, ways we can split the x-axis. We just want to go with kind of a traditional, you know, define the x-axis for. We're going to use a histogram methodology and we're going to do stars. And then Yelp typically uses a five star system. So let's break it into one star bins. So let's apply this and see what our visualization looks like. So like I mentioned, the first green section is going to be the count of the restaurants. So here we have four star restaurants. We have 98 of them. The second one is the average uh, amount of reviews that those restaurants get. So on average, a four-star restaurant within our, that within our query has 70.51 reviews, which is relatively high. So let's say that we wanted to combine multiple visualizations and show them off to you know, an executive team, or we wanted to monitor this over time. We could save this visualization, and we can start adding this to a dashboard, which will provide more, more regular updates and some related information. Let's call this bars. So let's go to the dashboard. Now the dashboard's kind of interesting. It says ready to get started and you just have to press this plus symbol. When you press it, it shows you all the visualizations available. We have the pizza one I mentioned within the study um, and our bars, which we just created. Let's click that and also bands. This produces two, this brings the two visualizations we created um, onto the chart. And what's nice about this is we can just move this around, expand it so that it makes more sense. Now, what was cool about this system too is that you can also filter based on just clicking on the visualizations or using the search bar. So for example, you can press this uh, doc fours, and it will filter everything uh, based on the x-axis. And you can also search, so doc stars four will give us the same result set.